What is up, John Middlecoff? Go Low Podcast. Hello, friends. Augusta National, the Masters is here. Well, not quite yet, but very, very soon. Subscribe to the podcast on the Three and Out podcast feed, as well as if you're listening on AMP, love it. Download the AMP app. We are live on Amazon AMP every single day of the week, all the volumes content, as well as on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a comment, share the podcast with your friends. We greatly appreciate you. A lot going on golf-wise, biggest tournament of the year, best tournament of the year. Can't wait. We will dive into it all, all of it. And if you want to go to a golf tournament, do you have a PGA event coming to you this summer? Do you have a, a PGA event which within driving distance? Well, I got you. Download the Game Time app, which is now the official ticketing app of this show, Go Low and the Three and Out podcast. No big deal. Promo code John, J O H N, and get $20 off. So if you, hey, you live in Southern California, you want to go to LACC, watch the US Open, I got you. You want to go to a, an NBA game, you want to go to an NHL game, you want to go to a baseball game, catch a little hardball. Promo code John, $20 off all year long. The official ticketing app because of you guys using the code. I greatly appreciate you. Could not do it without you. Let's go. Promo code John. Okay, I, I don't even, there, there's so much we could dive into. Uh, and I wanted to start with this. We'll, we'll leave this short and sweet. We talked about it earlier this week. I love Tiger Woods. Uh, what Tiger used to be, and I still value his competitive spirit. But when you watched him talk on Tuesday morning, like he's 47 years old. And given his health situation in this course, like he ain't playing it for 20 more years. To me, if I was putting the over-under on Tiger Woods competing at Augusta, I would probably put it under 10. And, you know, we'll see how his foot holds up. Like, there's a chance he's only got five or six left. So my overall take, I'm really going to try to soak up Tiger playing in this tournament for whatever it is. So 2027, 2028, 2030. Hell, it could only be a couple more years. Uh, we know the guy does not want to be some ceremonial golfer. He's never going to show up, you know, at 60 years old when he can barely walk and shoot 90, 88. That ain't happening. So this is a guy that 2019 is one of the coolest sporting events of my life. I would put 2008 at Torrey Pines when he beat Rocco. Actually played with a guy the other day at TPC, and he's like, we were teeing off at Camelback and they held us back like 10 minutes because they wanted to let the front group go. And I was like, well, who was it? He's like Lee Jansen and Rocco Mediate. Like, that's kind of cool. Uh, but 2008 was pretty special when the knee was shot, ripped. He needed microfracture surgery. Uh, 2019 was really cool. Uh, and that visual of him hugging Charlie at the end, beating the group of guys that he did, right? Kepka, Finau, Molinari, who had taken him out you know, the year before at the Open. So, you know, this is, we're coming down the home stretch here. And golf is, you know, a little unique of, like, Tom Brady's such an outlier playing that long. For the most part, you kind of know Drew Brees, Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, like, yeah, there ain't much left. We know Rodgers, like, he, he got a year or two. And he actually could keep playing, but he's just kind of over it. In other sports, like, it's... It's just obvious with age. Golf is not, right? Phil won a major at what, 50 years old at Kiowa a couple years ago? Like, it's probably not happening for Tiger. And I'm not trying to underestimate him or diminish, like, if he gets in a groove. I, I do think he could be competitive here, maybe like a top 30. But we got to enjoy it because he, he's one of the great needle movers in the history of entertainment. I'm talking entertainment, music, movies, TV, sports he, he's an all-time needle mover and we're just coming down the home stretch so this is this is his playground won it five times one of the greatest champions i'd argue the greatest champion this course has ever seen and uh let's just let's give him a little golf clap when he finishes hopefully sunday you know somewhat in the mix number two what made tiger a fucking legend just like what made jack arnold 
Lee Trevino, Nick Faldo, Rory Spieth. It's about majors. And you get to a point once you've won enough and made enough money, it's all about majors. And listen, Scotty's still relatively young in his career, right? I mean, he got his first win in 2022. Now, sometimes when you look at guys' careers, they peak for a couple years, three or four years, and that's when they win their majority of their tournaments. Who knows? You know, you never know with health. These guys swing so hard now. But I, I think the big three, this year is really about the big two. Anything less than a major championship at the end of the season for Rory and Rom to me, will feel like a disappointment. I mean, Rory was so damn close last year. And as someone who had him at, you know, uh, at St. Andrews, devastating L. Hat tip to Cameron Smith. Crazy thing is Rory didn't even finish second, but that hurt. And Rory's even talked about it like he cried, you know, on the golf cart ride with his wife back to the house. Well, Tiger mentioned it today. Like, Rory's going to win this tournament. And the career grand slam obviously is a big deal. He won four majors so fast. To me, when you think about Rory McIlroy and just overall his career and his impact over the last 20 years of golf, I know he hasn't been playing for 20 years, but, you know, the post-internet time on the PGA Tour, to me, he feels more like a 7-8 major guy than a 4 major guy. Now, to get to 8, you got to win your 5th. And listen, I've gambled on him. I have $300 on him. I, I got him about eight and a half to one, about a, a little three or four weeks ago. Maybe it was during the match play, so maybe two and a half weeks ago. So I'm all in. You know, I, I, I'm team Rory here. Uh, I'm also very tempted to put, because I got zeros in my in my gambling account right now, to do the same with John Rahm. Because I, I, I think anything less than one of those two guys being in the last couple groups on Sunday, assuming that, you know, weather prohibiting, would be a major disappointment for us as golf fans, for the tournament, and specifically for those two individuals. I think they're showing up at the next four majors to win it. They're clearly going to be right there with Scotty, the favorites. Uh, but unlike Scotty, like, you know, those guys got to do it. You know, John has only won one major, and it came several years ago at the U.S. Open. Uh, he's been really close here. And obviously, Rory last year finished second. Weird second kind of came on at the end and the chip in on 18. But I, for me to make this tournament just the shit. Now, again, I'm biased. I got money on it. But I think we can all agree to have those two guys involved. Honestly, I would love both of those two guys to be involved. But I think there's tangible pressure on him, man. And John Rahm's not quite on Rory's level, obviously, in terms of career resume. But he's kind of getting to the point where he's going to be judged on majors, the players, and like winning the FedEx Cup. And I know I don't actually care about the FedEx Cup, but I just mean like, did he win the $20 million at the end of the year? Like, was he the best player start to finish? Because last year it was, you know, Scotty versus Rory, basically. And uh, that to me is a major headline, those two guys. Because I, I like it when the cream rises, right? I, I like watching Patrick Mahomes eviscerate and Joe Burrow kick the shit out of everybody. I like last year when Steph Curry's back was against the wall, when he went full legend and said, bye-bye, Boston Celtics, I'm winning the title. And that's what he did, game four. Unstoppable. And that, that's what these two players feel like. You know, generational talents, all-time great players. Uh, obviously, Rory's accomplished more. But, like, to me, if, if Rory's going to be a 7-8 major guy, like, Rom has no excuse to be a not a 5-6 guy. Like, he, he's that level player. So I'm looking forward to watching both those two guys and obviously gambling on both of them. And last, like, listen, eventually part of getting into this tournament, some of, obviously for live guys, some of them are past champions, but Sergio's, you know, the Phil's, the Bubba's like, they're never winning this thing again. And Brooks Kepka hasn't won it. So he doesn't have a lifetime exemption. DJ does. Cam Smith doesn't either, but because he won last year, he's got five more years. Like, I, I want to see the live guys, a couple of them, like, and, and we've been saying this about their tour, part of validating all that money that Norman got the, the PIF and SBF to give them all, is he needs the stars to ball. And part of the way to gain some credibility as a tour, because let's face it, no one's giving them any credit last week except themselves. And when I say themselves, Greg Norman. 
Like, can and DJ doesn't really care. He's already accomplished a ton. He's got, whatever, 25 wins. He's got a couple majors. But, like, they need him. And I'm actually pretty confident this week. I expect DJ to play pretty well. But I do think there are other big names, assuming, like, I don't expect Bryson to play well here. He never has. So I'm not even counting him, and he's been shitty the last couple of years. But I do think Brooks, who showed signs of life winning a tournament, again, hard to quantify, but we know this guy's a four-time major champ and easily could have won several other majors. Remember, when Phil won at Kiowa, Brooks played with him. That was like two years ago. So this is a guy that you never discount when, when the bright lights are on. And this week, the bright lights are on. And I, I think Liv could really use DJ, but specifically Brooks or Cam Smith, to just be around the top of the leaderboard come the weekend. Because I, I think there's some, you know, Cam is a low-key Australian guy, and Brooks is more of the cocky kind of champion American guy. But I think those guys just elicit more emotion than DJ. Like, I root for DJ. I like DJ. Even uh, Rory, like, everyone likes DJ. He's just likable. Like, he's, he's easy going. You know, he's just, his game is just consistent. Like, there's nothing, he's just slow, steady, wins the race. Going to win a tournament every year. You know, him and Paulina, their kids, Gretzky, having some shots of tequila, hanging out on the lake. I, I do think the other guys are just a little more polarizing because Cam Smith became such a star so fast. And Brooks always had kind of this FU edge. I don't even like golf. I wish I was a baseball player, even though I'm one of the most accomplished golfers of the last, like, 10 years. So I, I do hope for entertainment value. I throw Patrick Reed in here too. I just don't know if Patrick Reed is good anymore that some of those polarizing younger, like under 40 live guys are just in the mix with Rory raw, maybe a Xander Finau. And I think this masters could be like non tiger in 19, just one of the more interesting television products that we got uh, in a long time. And it'll, it won't be duplicated at the other majors. The other majors is a lot different. Uh, the Masters does not care. They will show these guys. Uh, but I, I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that at minimum we get one of the polarizing live guys in the mix. And I, I, I do expect, if you want to gamble, like I, I don't think DJ is the worst play. 